Uh, if you want, you can you can trust your brain and say 16 times 2 squared is 64. We're not graphing the, the parabola that shows the distance it's fallen. We're just using this as uh, the calculator to make a table. And to make a table, you've got to put the function in. So the part that I need now is divided by h, which, of course, I'm using x because that's the only variable you can use here. Make sure your brackets are all set up right. The graph isn't going to mean much to us, but you haven't used the making a table on here very much. But it's it's useful, right? All a table is is getting the calculator to do the calculations for you instead of having to do it yourself, right? I want to know the value of this thing. I want to know the slope when I put in a bunch of different h values. So that's all I'm doing here. Now, I, I don't want this to be, I want it to put, I want to be able to enter my own number, so I'm going to put ask, right? So I want to be able to do that. So I'm going to look at this. It's got nothing there. You might have some other values that someone else put in, but you can delete them all. All this is going to give me now is it's going to tell me, I'll flip back to this for a sec, what, what this is telling me is it's telling me what is the slope when I punch in certain values for h. That's all it's doing. We're not looking at the graph or anything right now, right? We're looking at, we're looking at what is the slope. Are we, are we okay with that? Because that's kind of critical to being able to understand what we're doing. What does it give you when you put in various values? Remember, when you look at the picture, I'm saying, what if I make h1, what do I get? What do I get if I make h a half? What do I get if I make h a quarter, a tenth, a hundredth? Like, what do I get when I put all those things in? That's what I'm doing. So let's actually do that then. I'm going to actually go 2. It gives me that. Then 1. So I'm, I'm pushing them closer together, and I should actually make these match up here. Why don't I do that? Put the calculator over here. It's still on the screen, I guess. Okay, so I'm saying, what if it was 2? Now, what if it was 1? If it's 1, I'm putting it, oops, not that. If it's 1, I'm putting it there. Now, what if I make it a half? So if I put in 0.5, what's happening with the values of the slope? Because that's what this is. This is the slope. Is it doing what we expect according to the picture? It is, right? Because when I started over here, it was steep. And then it's getting less and less. It's still higher than this, which it looks like, I don't know. What's up? Question? Why aren't we getting 64? Why aren't we getting 64? Why do you want it to be 64? You're way ahead of me, I'm realizing here now. So there's a half. No, it's good that you're ahead. I'm going to put in a tenth and a hundredth and all that. How did you decide that you think it should be 64? Because you jumped ahead to this, which is good again. But 0 .001, 0 .0001. It looks like it's heading for 64, right? You could confirm that by going from the other side. If you started from this side, so we'll go back up here now. Delete all these. I'll go a bit faster now. If you put in, whoops, we got to go negative 1, right? Negative 1, you're starting from that side. Negative 0.5, you're getting closer, right? You're getting closer here. There's negative 0.5. We'll go jump ahead to negative 0.1. Negative 0.1. Negative 0 0.01. What does it look like is happening there? Negative 0 0.001. It looks like it's zeroing in on 64. You expect that it looks like it's going to be 64, right? Like you said, you could you could skip ahead here. Negative point. At that point, it's actually going to show 64 in the table, but and it's actually going to show 64 down here because it's rounded it off. But what you're asking me is, what if we put zero in? It says Error, right? Why is that? Because the two points can't be on top of each other when you're talking graphically, right? The function is undefined then because there's no difference. When you look back at this, what's happening when I actually put zero in there? Yeah, you're dividing by zero. This expression is undefined. This is undefined when it's zero. Undefined when h equals zero. So what does that mean it is? When we looked graphically, or sorry, when we looked numerically, looks like it should be numerically. Numerically means, i.e., looking at a table, using a table, using tables, it appears that it should be what? 
appears that it should be what? Should be 64. It is 64. You can't prove it with a table. But you can't you can't prove it with a table, but you can get a sense of what it looks like it should be. Okay? It should be looks like it should be 64. If you want to show that it's 64, we're going to do some algebra here. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the limit of this. When you find, when you talk about the limit of a function, you're talking about the behavior of that function near a certain point. We will use the limit of this function. Okay, we're going to use the limit of that function as x approaches, not x, what is it called? H, as H approaches what? We want to we want to know what's happening here. Look at that handwriting; it's terrible. As H approaches zero, right? So we're going to write. You're going to say, well, we had that the average speed was the average speed was that expression. Let me rewrite it here. Actually, let me copy and paste here. since I have the capacity to do that. You're all jealous, aren't you? Well, you were jealous until it ended up in the wrong place. Okay. This is the this is critical to understand here. That's the way I have it written there, that's the average speed depending on what h is. If I want to know what the instantaneous speed is, instantaneous speed, if I look at the limit of this as h approaches zero, what you're saying is, what, how does this function behave as I get closer and closer to zero? When you talk about the limit, what you're saying is, what is this thing's value if you get infinitely closer to zero? You can't sub in zero because it's undefined, but you can look at the limit of this. When you talk about the limit of something, you're talking about how does this function behave when you get close to it, close to this value from either side. We already know by looking at the table it should be 64. Sometimes you can figure out limits algebraically if you can, if you can simplify this expression, which we can here. You can simplify that. I really should have put a few blank pages in there for you. You can simplify this by doing some algebra here. This limit is the same as if I change this around. If I if I simplify this, I can then figure out what the limit is. I can't substitute in zero, but I can figure this out by doing this. How could I I could expand this thing? What do I get when I expand that? Four plus four h plus h squared. Are you okay with that? Does it make more sense if I put two plus h times two plus h? It does? Okay. Uh, minus 64, right? The whole thing over H. I haven't changed this. I've just, I've just done that. I've just uh, simplified it algebraically, changed it around a bit algebraically. I haven't made it different values. The values of this would be the same as the values of this. That's all I've done. Uh, if I actually multiply that out on the top, I get 64 plus 64H plus 16H squared minus 64, the whole thing over h. If I continue along here, that should be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of. I'm just going to start to do some stuff here. What could I do with this? How can I simplify that a little bit more? 64, 64, right? So you might, you might, if I, if I get rid of these, not that you have to write this down, of course, but because that might make your work a mess. But you have 64h plus 16h squared plus h. What can I do with it now? Yeah, you can factor out, divide the h out. So you end up, you don't have to show me factoring it out, but if you divide both of those by h, you get 64 plus 16h. I couldn't substitute in the, the zero at the beginning here, right? I couldn't substitute in the zero at the beginning. Can I substitute in the zero now? If you can substitute the if you can substitute the zero, the value in, you can evaluate the limit, right? 
you can put that number in and it's actually equal to 64 plus 16 times 0. What does it give you? 64. That's it. Okay, 64. The, the point of this is not, like, I know you could have figured that out if I just said, hey, why don't you simplify it and see what it should be. The concept is we can use limits to look at what's happening with functions nearby where they're not defined. Okay? It's important to realize that whether we went from one side or the other, it didn't matter which side of the thing I came from. When I came from this side, it was headed for 64. When I came from this side, it was headed for 64. We're going to look at somewhere it's different on either side. The limit doesn't exist then. The limit doesn't work. The limit exists if the slope looks like it's the same on either side here. Okay? That's, that's, you, when you get to higher level physics or math or chemistry and stuff like that, you start to define some things that you do with calculus concepts, one of them being limits maybe, right? All you're saying when you say, I want to know what the limit is, is how does this function behave near this point? Usually you talk about limits when you can't actually figure out what it does at that point, but you could ask what's the limit of a function even if it does, even if you can figure out what it is at the point, right? Like if I say, if I say um, this is 3x squared, there's a function, right? This is f of x. Can I work out what the value is when x is 2 there? Is there any restriction? Can I put the 2 in? Yeah, it's 12, right? f of 2 is 12. When you put in a 2, I could talk about the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x squared. That's an easy limit to, to work out because I could just put the number in, right? It's 12. All I'm saying is when I look at the graph of that, at 2, this is 12. It just so happens that the function we just looked at had whatever the, did you say it looked like? It's sort of whatever the function looked like, it had a missing value there. Like it had, a, it had an undefined point there. It was, who knows what that value is. All you're doing is saying, if I want to know what it's supposed to be at that point, I can just look at how does it behave when you come from either side. How does the function behave? What does it look like it should be? Right? If I said, here's a function, there's a missing value there, what should it be? You're pretty clever people, and you could say, whatever that is, that's what it should be. That's what limits are. Okay? Um, there was a box here somewhere for you. I think mine's way on the previous page. No, it's not. Where is it gone? Why is it not even there? Oh, there it is down there. Okay? Um, we're going to look at another function here. Can we... This really is pretty critical, talking about limits. It's a foundation for a lot of other things we do, so it's important that you understand. Uh, I'm going to stop this again and start it, but you can uh, you can look at this function. Could you possibly do this? This is more open-ended here. I want you to put this function in your calculator, y1 equals. I want you to play around the window until you can see what it looks like. And then I want you to think about two limits. I only wrote one of them here. I want you to think about what the limit is as x approaches 0 of this function. And I want you also to think about what is the limit of that function as x approaches infinity. Don't sit there and scroll to the right until <laughs> you get to infinity, but you can use your... Uh, you can use your intuitive understanding of what's happening when you look at the pattern that the graph shows. I'm not getting to infinity. How far do I have to go here? All right. And then put some support here. Draw a quick little table for yourself that shows, that illustrates what you think the limit is. You aren't going to be able to do this one algebraically. Don't say, oh, look, I can do this one algebraically. The limit is... I can cancel the x's. It's sin. <laughs> okay, that's not the limit of that. You cannot cancel the x's. You're not laughing, so that means I'm a little worried that you think you can cancel the x's, right? <laughs> can you simplify this? Sine x over n. <laughs> it's uh, it's six, right? Six. 
There we go. Okay. So 